Anandana Shalakaya Jaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakalpa Terubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha <coughs> Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Padarhar <coughs> Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading Krishna book and this meeting is being recorded. We're reading Krishna book and we're on chapter number 34. We didn't finish it. There are two pastimes told in this chapter. So we told the first one about Nanda Maharaj being swallowed by a big snake and then Lord Krishna coming and liberating that snake and he was a demigod from the Vijadara planet. So the, the second pastime, which is in the same chapter, 34, is about how Krishna kills a demon called Shankachuta. So, describes that after Krishna had freed Nanda Maharaj and liberated the Vijadara from the body of the snake, so it was a very pleasant night and Krishna was with his brother Balaram and they went into the forest of Vrindavan together. So Krishna and Balaram were accompanied with some of gopis, many gopis of Vrindavan. They also came with them and they were enjoying their company. And these young ladies were very beautiful and they were very nicely dressed and covered with some sandalwood and decorated with flowers. And the moon, the moon, there was a nice moon shining in the sky and so it wasn't too dark and there were many nice stars glittering in the sky. And there was a nice 
pleasant breeze blowing which carried the smell of the different flowers from the forest. And there were bumblebees who were very eager to get that smell, the nectar from the flowers, because the bumblebees take the honey from the flowers. So it was a very beautiful atmosphere and Krishna and Balaram began to sing very nice songs. And when Krishna and Balaram were singing, all the gopis, they became very absorbed in their singing and the rhythm of the song. And the gopis, they just forgot, they forgot everything and their hair became loose and their clothes also slackened and even their garlands began to fall to the ground. <laughs> So it was at that time that there was a demon who was an associate of Kuvera. Kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods and there was this one demon who was this associate of, the, of Kuvera. He appeared there. This demon's name was Shankachuda because he had, he had this name because on his head there was a, a valuable jewel which was just like a shank, like a conch shell. So we know before at the, how Kuvera had two sons, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, and how they had become puffed up because their father was so rich and powerful and opulent. So they didn't care about Narada Muni. So this Shankachuda he was the same, he was also puffed up because of all of his opulence and he thought Krishna and Balaram are just two ordinary cowherd boys. And he was envious of Krishna and Balaram, he thought why should they have the company of so many beautiful young Ladies. So we find, you know, in material world, when somebody has a lot of money, he thinks that all the beautiful women are there just for him to enjoy. And because Sankachuda, because the Sankachuda demon, because he was from the rich family of Kuvera, he thought that he 
should enjoy these women and not Krishna and Balaram. So he decided that he should take charge of these girls. And he had a stick with him. He didn't, he didn't touch the ladies, he didn't touch these girls, but he had a stick with them and he began to make them go to the wards the north. He got them to leave where they were with Krishna and Balaram and he got them to follow his order and made them move away in another direction. So he was controlling them just like he was their husband. Although they were with Krishna and Balaram, he, he was taking, he was making like he was their husband. So these gopis, they were forced by the Shankarachuda to go away with him. So they called out to Krishna and Balaram for protection. So Krishna and Balaram picked up big pieces of wood in their hands and they told the gopis, don't be afraid, we are coming to get this demon. So this Shankarachuda, when he saw that Krishna and Balaram were coming, he understood they must be, they may be too powerful for him. So he left the gopis and he ran out, uh, out, of, a, out of fear. He ran away. But Krishna just, just Krishna told Balaram, take care of the gopis, and he said, Krishna said, I'm going to get that demon. So Krishna caught him and Krishna hit his head with his fist and killed him. And then Krishna took the jewel, that jewel which was like a big conch shell. Krishna took that jewel and brought it back. And he gave that jewel to his big brother, Balaram. So that's the end of chapter 34. Now we'll go on to chapter 35. And chapter 35, the, it's more about the gopis and how the gopis feel separation from Krishna. So the gopis... The gopis, they would dance, rasa dance with Krishna every night. But they wanted to associate with Krishna in the daytime also. So, 
But every day Krishna would go to the forest with all the boys, the cowherd boys and the cows and the gopis would have to stay back in their houses. So although the gopis stayed back in their homes, in their hearts, they went with Krishna and they enjoyed Krishna's company in their heart. So this is the mood of service in separation. This is how to associate with Krishna in separation. So in, in the Lord Chaitanya and his all of the people in his line of disciplic succession, they all practice this mode of association with Krishna in separation. Uh, yeah, we don't have his physical association, but we can associate with feeling in the heart. So devotional service to Krishna in the feeling of separation helps us to come to the, the, the highest level, the level of the gopis, the highest level of devotion. Just, just like the Goswamis, of, the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, they left all their material opulence, they had a lot of money, they were rich people, and they left everything to go and live in Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan they would have to live by begging from door to door. But they were enjoying transcendental pleasure all the time. And the same way Lord Chaitanya was living at Jagannath Puri and he was in the mood of Radharani feeling separation from Krishna. So all of the devotees in the Madhva Godia line, they should always feel separation from Krishna. And we should worship his form and talk about his transcendental teachings. So if we always feel separation from Krishna and at the same time serve Krishna, that is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. So we're going to hear about how the gopis would talk about Krishna with each other. So one gopi said to the other gopis, Do you know 
when Krishna lies on the ground, he, he rests on his left elbow and his head rests on his left hand. And while he's laying like that, he will play the flute with his little fingers. And the sound of the flute is very wonderful. When Krishna plays on his flute, there are demigods from heaven and they are traveling in their aeroplanes with their wives. And when they hear Krishna play the flute, they stop their aeroplanes. Because the sound of Krishna playing the flute is so wonderful, they become stunned, they just stop everything. And the wives, they have their wives with them. When their wives hear Krishna playing on the flute, then they, be, they, become, they feel ashamed because they know their own singing and their music is nowhere near as nice as Krishna. And when they hear Krishna play the flute, these ladies, they feel love for Krishna and their hair becomes loose and their clothes also loosen. Then another gopi said, Krishna is so beautiful that the goddess of fortune is always on his chest. And Krishna always has a golden necklace around his neck. And when he plays the flute, then it, it pleases the heart of all the devotees. All the cows and the other animals of Vrindavan, even if they're eating or taking food in their mouth, they will stop chewing just to hear Krishna play the flute. And the, their ears will rise up, their ears will rise up and they will be stunned, they cannot move. So Krishna's flute playing is so wonderful that all the animals, they, they, they just become they become, it's like they're not alive, they can't move any, they just can't move, they become stunned, they become so still.
And then another gopi said, not only living animals, but even things like rivers and lakes of Vrindavan also become stunned when Krishna passes. Krishna comes with a peacock, peacock feather on his head and his body is covered with special colors which are found from the stones in Vrindavan. And his body has decorated himself with leaves and flowers, which he gets from Vrindavan forest. And when he plays on the flute and calls the cows with Balaram, then the river Yamuna will stop flowing and wait for the dust from his lotus feet. But the gopi said the river Yamuna is unlucky like us. She doesn't get Krishna's mercy. The gopi said, just like we stop crying for Krishna, so the, the river Yamuna stops flowing, the waves stop, just trying, waiting, trying to get Krishna's mercy. So when Krishna was away from the gopis, the gopis would always cry. But when Krishna was coming, and if they knew Krishna was coming, they would stop crying. But when they saw Krishna was not coming, then they would then they start crying again. So Krishna is the Supreme Lord and the cowherd boys are all like demigods. Just like Lord Vishnu is always surrounded by demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma and Indra and Chandra and others. So Krishna is also surrounded by his friends, the cowherd boys. And Krishna would play his flute to call the cows. So just by association with Krishna, the trees, the plants, and all the different things growing in the forest, they all became Krishna conscious. So the, the trees and the plants, they, they only have a low consciousness, but by Krishna's association, they also become Krishna conscious. And they were the trees and 
they will offer everything. They'll offer all their fruits, all their flowers and all the honey. They'll offer everything for the service of Krishna. Sometimes Krishna will walk on the bank of the Yamuna and he will have nice he will wear nice decorations and beautiful tea like on his face. And his body will be covered with sandalwood and tulsi leaves. And many bumble many bumblebees will come around Krishna's body because there's so many flowers and nice smelling sweet flowers they will come to try to get the honey from the flowers. And Krishna will hear the bumblebees making the sound, humming, mm, mm, mm. and Krishna will play the flute and he will play his flute to every, such, make such a beautiful sound. And when Krishna plays the flute, then other birds, different birds like the swans and the ducks, they will all begin to swim. Oh, oh no, they'll stop swimming. They won't be able to swim. When they hear everything, then they hear Krishna play the flute, the swans and the ducks and They'll all stop swimming and they'll stop flying. They'll just be stunned. They cannot move. And they will close their eyes and they'll just meditate on Krishna. Then another gopi was describing, she said, Krishna and Balaram, they're very nicely dressed. They have earrings and nice pearl necklaces. And they go on top of the Govardhan hill and they become absorbed in pleasure. Krishna plays on his flute and everybody becomes very happy. When Krishna plays the flute, the clouds stop all their noise, you know, in the, in the rainy season there's a lot of thunder and the clouds make a lot of sound, but when Krishna plays the flute, the clouds will become quiet because they, they don't want to disturb him, they're afraid of him. <laughs> And instead of making a lot of sound, they would just make little sounds, soft little sounds, and because they know Krishna is their friend. Yeah. The cloud and Krishna are friends because they both try to please the people. When the people are disturbed, they will try to help them. 
พราะว่าทางคู่เนี่ยก็พยายามที่จะอยากให้ผู้คนเนี่ยมีความสุขเมื่อไรก็แล้วแต่ที่ผู้คนเนี่ยรู้สึกว่ามีความยากลำบากมากเมก็จะให้พยายามให้ความสุข Just like when it's very hot the cloud will come and pour rain to cool everybody down so it will satisfy the people เหมือนกับเวลาที่อากาศเนี่ยร้อนมากเวลาร้อนมากคนก็จะเริ่มอารมณ์เสียอะไรหลายอย่างแต่ว่ามูเมฆเนี่ยก็จะมาแล้วก็จะให้ฝนเพื่อความร่มเย็น And the same way in material life people become very disturbed by the fire of material desire because of all their material desires and attachments so Krishna helps to give relief from the fire of material life เหมือนกันกับสิ่งมีชีวิตในโลกวัตถุที่เขาเนี่ยกำลังถูกเผาไหม้ด้วยด้วยโรคของโลกวัตถุนี้อยู่กริชนาเนี่ยก็จะมาแสดงความเมตตาโดยการมาปรากฏหรือมาช่วยเขาเนี่ย So Krishna and the cloud are friends they have the same color and they 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 both try to help give comfort to the people อาจารย์กฤษณากับเมฆเนี่ยจึงเป็นเพื่อนกันทั้งคู่เนี่ยมีสีที่เหมือนกันด้วยแล้วก็มีจุดมุ่งหมายเดียวกัน So the cloud sometimes wants to try to please Krishna wants to congratulate Krishna and sometimes instead of pouring water will pour flowers on Krishna อาจารย์เมฆเนี่ยบางครั้งเนี่ยก็จะมาในรูปของฝนเพื่อให้ให้กิชนาแล้วบางครั้งเนี่ยก็จะมีดอกไม้เนี่ยโรยลงมาให้กิชนา And the cloud will also cover Krishna's head just like an umbrella to protect him from the heat of the sun แล้ววันไหนที่มีพระอาทิตย์ร้อนมากเนี่ยมูเมฆเนี่ยก็จะมาเนี่ยอยู่บนกิชนาเหมือนกับเป็นลมให้พระองค์ So another gopi was talking to Mother Yashoda And she told Mother Yashoda, you know, she said, your son, your son, that boy Krishna, he knows all the different ways to take care of the cows and how to play the flute. <laughs> And he makes up his own songs, and he plays them. Well, on his flute, when he's playing his flute, he will also he has so many songs also. And when he plays, even even in the morning or in the evening. All the demigods like Shiva and Brahma and Indra and Chandra, they bow their head and they listen very carefully. So these demigods are very expert, but. When they hear Krishna play the flute, they cannot understand Krishna's flute playing. They, even they listen very carefully, but still they cannot understand Krishna when Krishna plays the flute. ถึงแม้เขาจะมีความตั้งใจฟังขนาดไหนก็แล้วแต่แต่เขาก็ยังไม่สามารถรู้ถึงพระองค์ได้อยู่ดี Then another gopi was saying when Krishna comes home with his cows we can see the footprints of his feet with the different marks on the ground กูปีอีกท่านหนึ่งอีกนั่งหนึ่งเนี่ยก็จะบอกว่าเวลาคริชนาเดินทางกลับมาบ้านเนี่ยเราก็จะสามารถเห็นรอยเท้าของพระองค์นะ Krishna's lotus feet have marks like the flag, the thunderbolt, and the lotus flower and the trident. 
แล้วก็รอยเท้าของร่มเนี่ยจะมีสัญลักษณ์สัญลักษณ์บนฝ่าเท้าของร่มเนี่ยก็จะมีธงมีสายฟ้ามีตรีสูนมีดอกบัว So when the when the earth when the cows are walking the earth will feel pain but when Krishna comes then the earth will feel pleasure ตอนที่ฝูงวัวเดินเนี่ยแผ่นดินเนี่ยจะรู้สึกเจ็บปวดแต่เวลาที่กฤษณาเดินเนี่ยจะทำให้แผ่นดินเนี่ยรู้สึกบางเบาและรู้สึกสบาย And Krishna comes walking in just like just like he's an elephant he walks in with a big stride แล้วการเดินของกฤษณาเนี่ยก็ได้เปรียบเทียบไว้เหมือนกับการเดินของช้าง He walks, uh, carries his flute, and everybody looks at him, and they become lusty to enjoy Krishna's company. And the gopi says, when we see Krishna. Then we become just like trees, and we just stand still. We cannot move, and but the hair and our clothes all become slack. So Krishna has many thousands of cows. And they were divided into different groups according to their color. And according to their colors, they have different names. So when he would come home from the from the forest. He would have to gather all the cows, and he would count all the groups on his beads. Just like devotee have one hundred and eight beads, and each bead represents one of the gopis, so Krishna has one hundred and eight beads. For the 108 different groups of cows. So when Krishna comes home, he has a nice garland of tulsi flowers. And he puts his hand on the shoulder of a cowherd boy and blows his flute. And, and at that time, all the wives of the black deer, they become. They hear the sound of Krishna's flute, and they all become attracted. And the deer will come to Krishna, and the you and they will stand still. And they'll forget about their homes and their husbands. So the gopis see, just like us, we are attracted by all the qualities of Krishna. We're just like the this deer who are attracted by the sound of Krishna's flute. Then another gopi told Mother Yashoda that when your son comes home, he decorates himself with the kunda flowers. 
ล้วบูปีท่านหนึ่งเนี่ยก็บอกกับคุณแม่ยาชุดาว่าคุณแม่ยาชุดารู้ไหมคะเมื่อบุตรของท่านเนี่ยกลับมาที่บ้านเนี่ยท่านเออพระองค์เนี่ยจะประดับไปด้วยดอกไม้ที่ชื่อว่าคุณเนี่ย and then he will blow his flute and and from the blow blows the flute and it will create a and when he blows his flute there will be a nice breeze Which creates a nice atmosphere. The atmosphere will be very, very cool and has a nice, beautiful smell. And that time, different demigods who are not very big demigods, small demigods like the Gandharvas and the Siddhas, they will come, and they will offer prayers to Krishna. So Krishna is very kind to the people of Vrindavan. And when he returns home with his cows and friends, he is remembered. Everyone remembers Krishna, how he picked up the Govardhan hill. So that time, some of the big demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they will come to offer prayers to Krishna. And they will join with all the cowherd boys, glorifying all of Krishna's qualities. So when Krishna comes home in the evening, it is it appears like he must be tired because he's been out there all day. But he still tries to please all the people of Vrindavan. So when he comes home in the evening, he's got many garlands of flowers from the forest, and he's got also uh, he's got wearing beautiful golden earrings, and he walks with a stride just like the elephant. So when Krishna comes home, all the men and the women and the cows of Vrindavan, they all forget about the heat of the day. They're all happy to be with Krishna again. So this is how the gopis would remember Krishna during the daytime when he'd gone away from them. So we can see how Krishna is so attractive, not only to the gopis, but he's attractive to all the animals, and he's attractive even to the rivers and the lakes. Yeah, even the trees, the plants, the animals, the water, everything, the deer, the cows, 
they're all devoted to Krishna. So the, the example of the gopis is important for us. It shows us how to become attached to Krishna. We can have association with Krishna just by remembering his pastimes. So we all like to love someone, so we should develop love for Krishna. So if we always chant Hare Krishna mantra and remember Krishna's pastimes, then we can be Krishna conscious. And that will make our that will make our life perfect. All right. So that's the end of the chapter. Gopi's feeling of separation. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, Gurudev. Okay. From Thai devotee. Okay, ha. Unmute le ha. Prabhuji ha. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Accept my humble obeisances. Mataji, shui pai hai pom dina ha. คือผมสงสัยในหลักปัจจัยอจิมตยะอภิเบตะเบตะของไซตัญญะมหาปภูอ่ะครับอยากให้มหาราชอธิบายในหลักปัจจัยนี้ครับเพราะว่าในประเท
we are also spiritual, we are spirit souls, but we are very small and Krishna is very great. You see Shankaracharya, he said everything is one. But Lord Chaitanya said, is, yeah, there's oneness, but there's also difference. Now, in Buddhism, they say everything is nothing. They say nothing is real. They teach voidism. But Shankaracharya defeated the Buddhists and he drove the Buddhists out of India. Yeah, they all came to Thailand. Originally, Thailand was a Hindu country. Then the, the Buddhism came in. So Shankaracharya said, it's not nothing, it's one. And he thought, he said, everything is Brahman, everything is spirit. Yes, everything is spirit, but there's a difference between the living entities and the Supreme Lord. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, uh, Arjuna describes Lord Krishna that he is the Supreme Brahman. We are not the Supreme Brahman, we are just tiny parts of the Brahman. But Krishna is the Supreme Brahman. So we see this principle of oneness and difference in many things everywhere in the material world. Just like all of us, some of you are women, some are men, some are you are some are Thai, some are Nepali, some are Farang, some are Chinese. We're so many different we're all we're different we're one, we're all people, we're one in the sense that we're all people, but we're different. <laughs> So in the same way when we look at the Supreme Lord, He is He is one we are one with Him, but we are different. We are tiny sparks of His energy. Just like a fire gives a lot of heat and light. And the spark also has heat and light, but the spark is very small, the fire is very big.
So this is the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is supported with the words of the scriptures. The living entity, you see, we are we are the marginal potency of Krishna. That means we can either be in the spiritual energy or we can be in the material energy. So we are the energy of Krishna, but Krishna is the possessor, is his energy. He is the energetic. It's all his energy. So we have to understand how to connect to Krishna. We want to create unity. We want to bring people together. We know there are many people and they're all different. People are all different sh shapes and sizes and colors. But there's a oneness. Although there's a difference, there's a oneness. Oneness in the sense that we're all parts and parcels of Krishna. We're all meant to be servants of Krishna. So you have to understand Lord Chaitanya's principle and you have to apply it. You have to see the oneness. At the same time, you have to see the difference. The difference is that we, we become bewildered by the material energy. But Krishna never becomes bewildered by the material energy. It's, it's Krishna's energy. It's under his control. So, each of the different acharyas, they have a different philosophy. Madhva Acharya, he was, he taught two. He taught, you see, Shankar Acharya, he said, there's only one soul. He said, I am you and you are me. And we're all the Supreme, we're all God, but we're just an illusion. That's Shankaracharya. He taught, his philosophy is Advaita. Shankar. Shankaracharya doesn't believe, he didn't teach about two in the heart. He didn't teach about the living entity in the super soul. He just said one, just, just the one, one super, one soul. And that soul is God. Shankaracharya, 
ดวงวิญญาณแล้วก็องค์อภิวิญญาณแต่ท่านเนี่ยบอกถึงความเป็นหนึ่งแต่ความเป็นหนึ่งที่ท่านพูดถึงเนี่ยคือท่านพูดถึงองค์อภิวิญญาณอย่างเดียว But he's he's saying God can be bewildered. He said God can fall in Maya. แต่ว่าท่านเนี่ยบอกว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยก็เกิดความสับสนแล้วก็ตกอยู่ในความหลงได้ So their teaching is called Maya Vadi. That they say Maya is greater than God. Because the two words of them, we say they are called Maya Vadi. That is, they think that Maya is greater than God. Okay. 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 One is the master, and the others are the servant. All right. Yeah, we'll take more questions. Yes, good. Okay, นะคะต่อไปคำถามที่สองค่ะใครยกมือก่อนน่าจะชายามาละดี Krishna Guru Maharaj, that our pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. Ogori to Sri Prabhu Ban. Ah, the question of Pi, that ah, Sanam Sunon Tong, ah, Nong, Nit Nga. Ha. That is, Pi, Mi, Kwam, Sung Sai, Wa, ah, La Kang Kong, Bhagwan, Paramatma, and Brahman. Na. Pi, Nia, ah, we are aware that in La Kang Kong, we know that there is a Bhagwan, Mi, Tuo Tuo, that is the shape of Krishna. ทีนี้พี่มีความสงสัยนิดนึงว่าอย่างบรามันเนี่ยในบวัตติตาอธิบายว่าเป็นอภิวิญญาณที่ไหลรูปลับฉะนั้นคําถามของพี่ที่สงสัยก็คือเออที่เคยถามมหาราชว่าของศาสนาอื่นที่มีพระเจ้าที่ไหลตัวตนอ่ะหมายถึงบรามันหรือเปล่าเข้าใจพี่ไหมคะอืมอืมเข้าใจค่ะเข้าใจค่ะโอเคขอบคุณนะคะพี่ชาร์ question is As Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita that he is he is Brahman. So in this case, this Brahman mean mean him, and uh, like are the other religions that they don't believe in the form of God, but the God that they be calling is the the is the Brahman. That that's my question. You understand, Ramesh? The other religions. The the religions that they don't believe in the form of the Lord. Oh, they believe. Is, is don't believe. Is that the same thing that they've been talking about? Yes, right. That's right. Yeah, they believe in the. They believe. They say God is light. Yes. Or they say God is energy, or something. God is fire, like that. So that is Brahman. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. อาจารย์สิ่งที่พวกเขาพูดถึงถึงแสงหรือว่าถึงที่ว่าพระผู้เป็นเจ้าที่ไม่มีรูปลักษณ์ทั้งหมดเนี่ยก็คือเขาพูดถึงบรามันนั่นเองที่เราเข้าใจกันหรือที่เราเรียกกันว่าบรามันนั่นเอง So we say to these people, you know, how is it we have a form and God doesn't have a form? Means we must be greater than God. สิ่งที่เราจะสามารถบอกพวกเขาได้ก็คือเล่าเนี่ยเป็นคนแต่เรายังมีรูปลักษณ์เลยแล้วถ้าเกิดพระผู้เป็นเจ้าไม่มีรูปลักษณ์เนี่ยแสดงว่าเราเนี่ยยิ่งใหญ่ไปกว่าพระเจ้าแล้วสิ God is greater than us so God has a form he doesn't have a material form he has a spiritual form พระผู้เป็นเจ้าเนี่ยทรงยิ่งใหญ่กว่าพวกเราเพราะฉะนั้นท่านเนี่ยจะต้องมีรูปลักษณ์อย่างแน่นอนแต่ว่ารูปลักษณ์ของท่านเนี่ยไม่ไม่ใช่เป็นวัตถุแบบพวกเรารูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์เนี่ยเป็นทิพย์ So his form, we get old, we get diseased, we die, but he, his form is eternal, transcendental, full of bliss and knowledge. Krishna never gets old. Krishna never dies. Okay. Okay. Next question, Yogi. Yogi, Tamadaji. 
Thank you, Arjuna Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisance. Gurudev, uh, it's a slightly old question. Like two weeks ago, when you were having a class on Vidya Dara, uh, I'm sorry I came a bit late, so I wasn't. I didn't. I hadn't known enough information to ask the question before. But I recently read it in detail and. Uh, I came to know Gurudev Vidyadhara was in a serpent's body and then on when Lord Krishna touched him he said he attained he was completely purified and that he became Krishna conscious. So even after becoming Krishna conscious, how is it that he still had a material desire of going back to the heavenly planets or you know to his uh, kingdom wherever he belonged? He didn't didn't he want to serve the Lord or, I mean, you know, he still had a desire of going back to his place, the kingdom. That's a bit confusing for me. That's why I thought I'd ask. Well, the Lord liberated him from that body and he was back into the body of his, you know, the, the Vijadara. So he understood that's where he belonged. His body is for the is like the Vijadaras. So he's certainly going to go back to the Vijadaras. So he's going to go back to his Vijayadara planet to serve Krishna, to serve Krishna there, to preach Krishna consciousness. He had offered prayers and he glorified the Lord and he glorified the chanting of the holy name. So he was going to preach. Not a material desire. Okay, good. That means he would just go back to his capacity that he was supposed to be in, placed by the Lord's will and mercy, and he would no longer have those thoughts of being very beautiful or any other thing. He wouldn't be proud of basically anything and just serve the Lord. Yeah. Okay, good. Then. Understood. Understood. Um, Gurudev, my second question is regarding this, um, you know, Gurudev, it was always very beautiful to hear about the gopis not being affected by uh, being pure devotees, the purest of all. But yet, they knew that the goddess of fortune resides on the Lord's chest, but still they did not consider Lord Krishna to be the Lord. They just considered him as a coward boy. I mean, it's so mysteriously beautiful. Oh, yeah, Gurudev, I don't know what to say. It's just, Lord Krishna, it seems, purpose put them in that, um, how do I say, put Maya over them so that they could not see him as the Lord, is it? But they could see that the, the goddess of fortune was on his chest. Uh -huh. Yet. Yeah. Ah. Gurudev is truly very amazing. Just boggles the mind so much just to think that she could they could see that but yet not recognize him as the Lord yeah they, not only they could see that they could see all the demigods how they were being affected by Krishna and they could see how the river Yamuna was affected by Krishna mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
พวกเขาเนี่ยสามารถเห็นถึงความรักที่แม่น้ำยมุนามีให้กุชนาแล้วก็สิ่งมีชีวิตดวงอื่นๆที่มีให้กุชนาโอเค Yes, what's yes, up? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Next. Got two more questions, Gurudev. Yes. Madhavi Bhavani Madhavi Shankha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance. Hare Krishna. Arjana Hak. Kamthaam Gatsuwa. Mamina Ni. มีคนคนหนึ่งอะค่ะเขาได้พูดความรู้สึกของเขาออกมาว่าเขารู้สึกว่าแบบเอ่อเขารู้สึกว่าความรู้ในศาสนาพุทธอย่างเงี้ยพระพุทธเจ้ามันก็มีมาแบบยาวนานมากแล้วสองพันปีแล้วเขารู้สึกว่าแบบมันนานจนไม่รู้ว่าจะเชื่อได้หรือเปล่าเพราะว่าตอนนี้มันก็น่าจะแบบถูกเปลี่ยนแปลงไปบ้างแล้วแล้วอย่างนี้ของเราเนี่ยห้าพันปีเนี่ยซึ่งมันนานกว่ามากเอ่อแล้วเขาสงสัยว่าแบบมันจะเชื่อได้มากแค่ไหนแล้วเราจะอธิบายกับเขายังไงดีได้ค่ะโอเคเอ่อ her question is recently someone told her that uh, he is in the Buddhism and he he is telling that the teaching of Lord Buddha is like two uh, thousand years ago Uh, it's quite old, and uh, he is. He was like, I'm not sure that philosophy. How how much we can apply that in the uh, present world? So and he was also telling like your philosophy is also like five thousand years ago. So how can uh, we still use that philosophy in uh, like now? Yeah. So how how should she answer that question? Well, you could say. Actually, this is not even 5,000 years old. This philosophy is from the beginning of the creation. It's many, many millions of years old. But it's not material. It's eternal knowledge. <laughs> มีการปรากฏของจักรวาลนี้เพราะฉะนั้นความรู้นี้เนี่ยก็มันเป็นความรู้ทิพย์ซึ่งจะสามารถใช้ได้ในทุกสถานการณ์ทุกการเวลา This knowledge is coming from the beginning of the creation, the time of the appearance of Lord Brahma, so many many millions of years ago. อันนี้เนี่ยคือมีมาตั้งแต่การสร้างพระพรหมมาตอนแรกคือหลายหลายล้านปีก่อนนะ But it's so perfect, everything is perfect knowledge. There's no fault, there's no mistakes, there's no need to update because that's a spiritual knowledge. Material knowledge goes out of date, but spiritual knowledge is perfect for all time. แล้วมันก็มีความสมบูรณ์อยู่ในตัวซึ่งซึ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยมันไม่ใช่ความรู้วัตถุถ้าเกิดเป็นความรู้วัตถุเนี่ยมันจะต้องมีการมาเปลี่ยนแปลงมาแก้ไขเลยแต่ในส่วนนี้เนื่องมาจากเป็นความรู้ทิพย์ความรู้ทิพย์จะมีความสมบูรณ์ในตัวของมันซึ่งไม่ต้องมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงอะไร So we call this Sanatana Dharma This is eternal religion Buddhism is not eternal Buddhism is material knowledge. It's only dealing with the material world, but Krishna consciousness is spiritual knowledge. We deal with the eternal spirit, and this is eternal religion. Krishna ที่สมเด็จนะคะถือว่าเป็นสนาตันเดิมก็คือศาสนาดั้งเดิมสำหรับทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตอาจจะแตกต่างจากศาสนาพุทธศาสนาพุทธเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่แล้วจะพูดถึงโลกวัตถุจะส่วนใหญ่โดยจะยังไม่มีการพูดถึงในส่วนของความเป็นทิพย์แต่ในศาสนาในในกิจการที่สำนึกเนี่ยจะพูดถึงความเป็นทิพย์ and you can tell them 500 years ago Lord Chit Lord Krishna came again 500 years ago to teach the present day to give us the modern Presentation of this philosophy, the same knowledge, Lord Caitanya came to teach the same, to teach everything to us again, 500 years ago. 
แล้วเราก็สามารถเพิ่มไปได้อีกว่าแล้วล่าล่าสุดในเมื่อ500ปีที่แล้วเองเนี่ยพระองค์พระคริชนาก็ทรงเสด็จลงมาอีกทีหนึ่งเป็นมหาปรุ And Srila Prabhupada is the representative of Lord Chaitanya. Then, just 50 years ago, he preached this knowledge all over the world. Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya, so that was only 50 years ago. So it's not very old. Srila Prabhupada is the พระอาจารย์ผู้สถาปนาสมาคมของเรานะคะเพิ่ง50ปีเองยังไม่นานมากฮาริคุชนาอินเทอร์เน็ตมาดูว่าพระฟังนี่ฮาริคุชนาฮาริคุชนาฮาริคุชนาเดี๋ยวสุดท้ายคำถามเดี๋ยวสุดท้ายคำถามนี้ของบารัตโปรซี Hi Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, my question is, uh, when we take anything for Krishna, it could be flowers or whatever we take, we take the best uh, what we get. So while making, uh, while cooking prasadam or while cooking boga, why can't we taste it and make it uh, more better and then offer it to Krishna? Why is that we are doing without any tasting and uh, uh, like that? That is my question, ma'am. Uh -huh. Well, come to Go ahead, Archana. Come to our Brazil, na ha. Bawa, when we are going to choose the flower, we are going to give it to Krishna. We are going to give the best thing to him. The best thing to him. The best thing to him. Why is it that when we are going to eat the food, why do we not give it to him? Because we are going to give it to him. Well, just like when we have flowers, also we don't want to smell them before offering them to Krishna. We don't. We we want Krishna. We want to respect Krishna as the proprietor, and we want to offer everything to him first for his pleasure. บริมาบอกว่าเหมือนการกับดอกไม้ใช่ไหมคะดอกไม้เนี่ยเราก็จะไม่ได้เอามาดมก่อนก่อนที่เราจะถวายคือเราจะถวายแต่ให้ก่อนเพราะว่าเราเหมือนกับเคารพพระองค์ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยเป็นเป็นผู้เป็นพระผู้เป็นเจ้าสูงสุด In relation to cooking, uh, one should be so expert that he knows how to cook nicely for Krishna. He should have confidence. And that he's, he knows how much of different spices, he knows what's the proper amount, and he will be able to cook in such a manner that he knows this is going to be all right to give to Krishna. <laughs> In special cases, Maybe you're not. Maybe you're cooking a big quantity, and you're not so used to how much salt or something. You may want to. So you could do it. You could check you, the cook himself. He could personally taste it. Only one person, the cook, he may taste it himself, just to see. But that's not. That shouldn't be a common thing. That may be a very special circumstances. แต่ถ้าเกิดในบางครั้งเนี่ยอาจจะทำอ่านแบบเยอะมากอะไรอย่างนี้ซึ่งอาจจะทําให้คนทํากับข้าวเนี่ยกะไม่ถูกแต่ในแบบนี้เนี่ยก็จะน้อยมากคนทํากับข้าวเนี่ยสามารถที่จะชิมได้แต่ว่าอันนี้เนี่ยไม่ควรเกิดขึ้นบ่อยหรือว่าไม่ควรเกิดขึ้นถ้าเกิดเราไม่จําเป็นจริงๆอันนี้ให้เกิดขึ้นในบางครั้งที่มีความจําเป็นจริงๆ So Krishna consciousness is practical You know, if somebody is not very sure, then okay, they may be able. They can go and taste it and just see. You know, but ideally, person should be confident. He should know how much to put. He should know what's actually the proper quantity to place in the preparations, right? And Krishna, this is something that is something that is. 
ป็นรูปธรรมมากใช่ไหมเพราะฉะนั้นเวลาเราจะทําอะไรเนี่ยถ้าเรามีระดับจิตสำนึกที่โอเคเนี่ยมันก็โอเคแต่เราจะต้องดูก่อนแต่ว่ากิจกรรมนี้ไม่แนะนําให้ทํามาเนี่ยอันนี้ในกรณีพิเศษเท่านั้นโอเค yes any other questions that's it yes g o o d f that's it okay so thank you very much Archana for translation thank you Gurudev. and we thank all the devotees for their participation for their questions and we'll see you all next week please take care protect yourself stay healthy Stay away from, stay away from the virus. h a r i Krishna, s h i l a p r a b h u p a d ki. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Go back to Brindavan, k i Hare Krishna. Thank you.